Hi guys, it's Richie, Richie Rides. So, today, I want to go check out uh, the Four Corners side of town, but instead of taking the route that I did last time, which took me down Regent Street, which is very busy, I'm just gonna casually go there using the side streets, which is a lot more enjoyable, uh, more relaxed and scenic, and maybe I thought maybe I'll take you you for a ride it's Sunday I don't expect to be uh, very busy at all of course the parks and beaches and those kinds of places will be but these streets won't be and maybe who knows maybe we'll end up in a beach when we're done so this is pretty cool I like this doesn't smell very good though <laughs> So this would be kind of my winter route as well, because the uh, if, when I'm riding, I'm not going to be doing as much riding this winter. But riding in the winter, um, you really want to stay away from sidewalks and those main roads because they end up putting the snowbanks on the bike paths. Oh, I want to go this way. And that's not very, I don't know, it's kind of, uh, kind of makes it hard. It's hard. I did a lot of videos on uh, riding in the wintertime. But definitely, if you have a mountain bike and you, or e-bike and you got winter tires, the spike tires work great, and you plan on riding in the winter, or even if you're a mobility scooter, side roads are the way to go. It's a lot safer. So I'm going to include uh, the names of the streets in the chapters, as always. So if you're in the area and you want to do this kind of ride, just check it out. This is the way to go. This is one way to go, I should say, because the other the thing uh, you have to get to the tracks, and there's like only a couple of places where you can cross the tracks. And so I'm right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going on the west side of Sudbury towards the mine, the main mine there in Co. or I've, I've Valley, or I don't even know what it's called. I should brush up on the names of the mines. They changed, that's why I don't remember. It used to be in Co. and now it's Valet. But anyway, um, so I'm just going to kind of go along in that direction and then I'm going to have to come about and cross the tracks on Regent and then I'll go back towards the west and then kind of go towards uh, the Telst Telstar. Uh, it's a really nice um, uh, neighborhood there. It's kind of hilly, but it's scenic and it's kind of cool. And, and it's nice that the e-bike has got the power to make going up and down those roads enjoyable. So I'm likely to get lost as well because, um, I'm gonna turn this way. So I'm just kind of meandering around. I mean, I've done this a couple times, but not it's not really stirred in my memory. I got kind of an idea where I'm going to go. And uh, so expect a detour or two. <laughs> but here's one way to cross the tracks. See, this is where I went up this way. And there's a lot of hills in this area as well. That's nice. And then we'll cross up the lights up ahead here. So I'll flash the name of this neighborhood on the screen as well.
Okay. And I'll go this way. Oh, you couldn't ask for a nice weather. A little bit hot in May and early June, but right now it's absolutely perfect. Get like a nice little shower about once a week. So everything is healthy and couldn't be more ideal for fishing and hunt, not hunting, it's not hunting season, but just for being outdoors, the cottage, having campfires, barbecues, hanging out. It just doesn't get better than this. About 23 degrees. Yeah, I'm going up this way. And beautiful. And I think my uh, chain and sprockets may be coming to the end of their life. It's getting a little clickety clack back there. So what ends up happening is when when the when the sprocket starts to wear out, you can't apply as much pressure, as much power to it, and you gotta like kinda be careful and that's when you gotta replace it. And it looks like I'm able to get about maybe uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand kilometers on a chain. We we're cruising here. I got a stop sign coming up. Her brakes are holding up good. Those probably last about a season. So all those are the consumable parts that are chain and sprocket. You gotta repl replace those at the same time. I went with SRAM because that's what the uh, local bike shop had and uh, I'm considering going with a uh, larger chain, uh, larger sprocket, like an 8-speed, uh, which is a kind of a slightly different class and I'm pretty sure my hub will fit an 8-speed sprocket, but I might have to change the shifter and that wouldn't be the end of the world if I had to change that. So I might have to change the, sh I might change the sh shifter. Um, sprocket chain combination there at the end of the season or when it gets starts getting bad another thing is there's, there's a bit of um, uh, resistance like there's not much space between the motor and that cable and there might be some debris in there which is kind of not making the shifts as, as uh, crisp they normally are so I might have to look at that okay so here I have to cross. This is one of the funky intersections. I'm just probably gonna just take the pedestrian crosswalk here. Oh. Good thing I waited. <laughs> Where's the, there's no, no push button. So I'm definitely gonna wait for the signal here. abusing my privilege. I 
don't know what's going on here. Everyone's waiting. Everyone's okay. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, let's get off this. All right, so let's go this way. Let's get away from traffic. Kind of ruins the buzz hit an intersection like that. So I'm not exactly sure which road which street here crosses it's some of them are uh, a lot of them are dead ends but I know one of them one of them should go through I'm not sure I can't remember which one it is I think it's this one here Marcel is it Norman yeah yeah okay here we go through this way to Charlotte. See, this kind of has to be mapped out. If you don't know about this, then you end up having to take the busy street. Because now I can go all the way down here. And we're gonna head towards that tower. Three wide, lots of room. Yeah, if you're wondering why the pavement's always so bad, because it doesn't last long, and you see like when I'm, when I'm riding around in the summertime, there's all these crews, like there's like six months where they can just turn around and repair all these suctions, and it's a never ending um, uh, patchwork, quilt work kind of repairs that go on. And that's just like a, you know, municipal, Stop going, you know, a lot of that. But these roads are just, they just, they don't last. They don't last. That's part of the living life up north is the, these kind of roads. A lot of people complain about it, but I'm just like, what can you do? I mean, you know, it's different when the, uh, the city doesn't maintain them. Oh, God, what's going on here? Woo! <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not moving. <laughs> right on. <laughs> We're all sitting here, kind of in a state of confusion here. That guy never saw me, so it's a good thing I wasn't behind. <laughs> but in general, people are pretty courteous. I'm much so more courteous than uh, that's not always the case. I mean, you do have some wing nuts that are just like completely rage, rage out over everything. That there's a lot, there's a, there's enough of that around here too. But in general, drivers I find are pretty courteous. I don't get into any uh, altercations or uh, shouting matches or uh, what the fuck moments that much. Very rare, maybe two or three. But I don't get I don't get riled up myself. Unless somebody just deliberately runs into me, or you know. all right, let's go up this way. Sophia. I never look at how fast I'm going too. I'm surprised sometimes I look when I see, look back at the videos and holy jeez, did I hit 50? Because <laughs> I'm concentrating on where I'm going and looking ahead.
37. <laughs> here. All right. Uh, which way, which way, which way? Okay, I want to go up Telstar. I think that way there will take me to uh, Kelly Lake. So let's go this way here, Marcel. All right. Okay. A little dog leg here. So far, so good. Have a direct path. Oh, and I'm also, am I recording this? No. <laughs> Forgot. Let's go. Barbara. Yeah, this is the way. You know what? I'm not going to bother. So I think Arnold, now this is going to take me to another neighborhood here. I think I was only here once or twice before. Skyward. Let's go Skyward. here. Pretty, pretty steep hill. Tell star. There we go. This is a neighborhood I want to check out. Moon Rock. This looks like a I'm getting close to the mine side here. I think, or no, it would be just a big rock, a big chunk of bedrock. See, back in the day, this would have been black. There would have been no trees. There'd been trees in the yard, probably, but wild, wild trees are, were kind of gone. Let's check out this neighborhood here. We're gonna have a big chunk. Look like a tree. 
trail. There is a trail here. Cool, let's check it out. Wow, is that really cool? Right on. Thank God they're not thistles. Oh, it's a little cut. Yeah, those weeds look nasty. Sweet. All right. So I'll go back this way. Actually. I'll keep going this way. Nova. My gears are out of alignment. I gotta fix my gears. Let's go. Sunday driver. Okay, so we'll just continue on, Brenda, because I know this will end up to our destination. Which is uh, Four Corner Shopping. So I took a little detour there on uh, Moon Rock. Apart from that, I just go from Telstar to Brenda. You take Brenda, ride her all the way home. This is a fun road in the winter time. Oh, that's cool, jungle gym. <laughs> that's what you need. Freaking right, man. Gotta turn that cartilage in this bone and that bone in the cement. <laughs> Look at this bad bargain. Sierra. I'm gonna park there. <laughs> ah.
Yeah, gonna be new sprocket, new chain day pretty soon. St. Charles. Look up. I gotta do some research on that. Upgrade, I think I'm gonna do the upgrade. Go to an eight speed. Because by the way I understand it, I think six, seven, and eight um, are a size larger. And nine, 10, and 11, 12, or, or, or I, I could be wrong about this, I gotta double check. But I know that my, my chain and, and sprocket has a, is thinner than uh, an eight speed. And so it would be more durable than a nine speed. The only thing I, like the final, like the, the, the tallest and the smallest gear are really the ones that matter the most. The ones in between, well, it's not so big a deal. As long as they all just land good. So here we are. I'll just go straight and down this uh, road here and then come in through the back. Getting our avoiding traffic strategy here. And while I'm doing that, Give that a couple of spins and see what makes a difference. <clears throat> okay. wide open parking lot. So it's the South Ridge Mall. Watch your lady, watch it, watch it. Squeaky. Watch it, squeaky. Yeah. Right, okay, so I just basically went around the parking lot. <laughs> Wee! Should have went out the other way. Right, guys. So, which way should I go back? Let's see. I'll 
across the street. Yeah, basically I'm going to be going to the grocery store by my... So I'll just go continue on this way. We're just taking a loop around to... Not that grocery store, I, although I could go to that one, but... I'm going to go to the one that I'm used to, where I get my meats. I just assume, and also the thing... You see in that particular situation where the guy was like halfway through the intersection? Like that gives me not much space even though I kind of should be going in front. I prefer going around and just taking myself out of the equation as long as nobody's doing a right hand turn. And I just find it to be just, uh, I don't know, it doesn't bother me to go around the back like that. And just, you know, because that's kind of how you turn around here. Like, you know, you just kind of put your nose into the inner, into, into the street and then just go I think it's piss poor design but whatever that's how people drive that's how we drive I'm the same way that's how I drive that's why I just go around the back some people back up and if they start backing up well then definitely go in the front but you know we're watching those uh, <laughs> videos out of the UK with, uh, Jeremy Vine and those my god what an environment they gotta ride down <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure if there's any uh, through roads here. Probably not. But it has a dead end, so I'll just uh, come back on here. All right. Thank you. Okay, I think I'm gonna cross the street. Uh, what's your, I'm not sure where to go. Let's see here. I kinda wanna get off the sidewalk though. I can't go that way, because all they're all dead ends. So I think Regent kind of like the only way through. Another dead end on that side, so. Ah, hell it, I'm just gonna keep going. I don't have that far to go anyway. It's just that when you're on Regent, there's no uh, side streets. They're all, this is it. Everything's a dead end. There's because of the lake back there, that's why.
I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Martindale. Oh, that's yeah, old. Jesus Christ, what a mess. I'll go this way. Okay. Our Sunday side street cruise. De stress a little bit. Oh, we got a bike path. Wow. Overheating or what? But, uh, still says battery. All right there. I didn't assume that guy saw me, so I slowed right down until he did. All right. All right, so we're getting close to our destination here. Yeah, so hope you enjoyed this ride. Just uh, side street cruising. We're gonna get back on the sidewalk here and go towards uh, the grocery store and the beer store and load up for tonight. And we'll probably have this posted tomorrow. So I hope you, well, please like and subscribe and hope you enjoyed the ride. And I'll just uh, let this play out. Or edit it, who knows. We're gonna be coming up on, actually, we're gonna be coming up on uh, 2,000 kilometers, or 5,000 kilometers. So I think I'm gonna do a, I've been thinking about doing a strip down. You can see my kind of, my chain and my shifter's kind of acting up a little bit. So that's probably, just needs some maintenance. And, and uh, I'm debating whether I should take the motor off, grease it, put it back together. It is 5,000 kilometers. Um, I'm a little hesitant of do about doing that because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kind of, it's screaming at me right now. Although there's people that say, well, grease your, you got to grease your stuff or whatever. But I would think, I don't know. Maybe it's a good idea, but just taking it apart and uh, unmounting it itself, putting it back on is going to introduce some variables in there that just may not run the same or I may, you know, 
At least that's the way my mind's working right now. The other thing I'm considering for an upgrade, yeah, this battery is too small, so it does limit me quite a bit. Like I can't go too far in either direction. There's some places I'd like to go, but I can't really go because I just end up running out of power. And uh, it's a 10, so a 13 amp hour battery. So the other option, because of the small triangle that I have in the, in the frame, is to use a, uh, a, a bike rack battery. It's basically a bike rack with a battery in between. I just take the, my back rack, bike back rack out and replace it with one with a battery. So it'll give me 17 amp hours. And also it's a higher quality battery. It's got a higher output and all that. It would just be cruising. This would be on easy duty with this motor. But uh, it's something to consider. But you know, at, at, at the same time, you know, do I want to spend that much money on it? It's, it's running pretty good. You can just kind of leave it. So we'll see. You never know. We might end up with a new battery and a new sprocket. And some longer adventures. <laughs> Let's go. These lights are really annoying. <laughs> 